joined now by Inaya Bunglawala of the Muslim Council of Britain and also by Shiv Malik, who's an author who's been critical of the MCB. Um, first of all, who do you represent? Because we get complaints from some Muslims mm. that you don't represent them. Well, the Muslim Council of Britain is made up of over 500 affiliates around the country. Mosques, schools, Islamic organizations, youth groups, etc. It is the largest, most diverse Muslim umbrella body we have in the country. It does not claim to represent each and every Muslim of the two million Muslims we have in this country. No organization can claim to represent all two million Muslims. But it is the largest and the most diverse umbrella body. So what's your problem with them? Because they condemn terrorism absolutely unequivocally and they've also called for good community relations. Well, I mean, they've done this today. That Dr. Abu Bari, the, the leader of the MCB, has said today, of course, we're drawing a line under the sand of all of this, which is remarkable. This, why, why wasn't this done, really, after July the 7th, after the loss of 52 did, lives? Did the MCB not criticise uh, July 7th? Did it not condemn terrorism on July 7th? Absolutely, I'm sure it did. However, um, what I'd really like to, I mean, obviously you've got a long record of, of, of A, supporting Hamas and supporting Bin Laden at Ipachon inopportune Nonsense. moments. And uh, to go on further from that, what I'd like to ask you now is, if you have moved on theologically speaking, and you are going to sort of re-examine all of these things and draw a line under the sand, then let me ask you this question, which is, do you think suicide bombings are halal or haram in Islam? It's a haram. Any, well, haram uh, well, forbidden rather Absolutely than forbidden. Halal. Any act, as we, uh, Dr. Bari made clear today, and have made clear over the last few years, any act which deliberately seeks to harm innocent civilians is absolutely forbidden. This is unanimous so, in the Muslim so world. So then why, for example, do you support um, uh, Sheikh Khadawi and also uh, Sheikh Ahmed Yassin? No. And your own tutor at one point no, was uh, Abu Ayman, who was who from support, Hamas. Sorry, who supports And this is Khadawi? in the 1990s. Who supports Khadawi? Your organ organization does. No, and, it does and not, not only that, you as the editor of Trends magazine in the early 90s yeah. supported Hamas. You know, you uh, regularly printed up uh, you know, posters with AK-47s printed well, up. Right. Saying Hamas support yeah, the okay. jihad. Well, makes very I mean, Hamas there. is a legitimate elected party in Palestine. It is not some fringe group. It's it is a group which is elected in Palestine, which we, as a democratic country, should deal with. Whether we like it or not, we should respect the wishes of the Palestinian people. But it's not just that they're a political organization, they are a theological one as well. And theologically speaking, they justify suicide bombings in what? Palestine. Do you, so no, we, we don't. Do you think it's part of your role mm. as an organization mm. to take on those theologically who justify suicide bombings and killings? Yeah, absolutely. But we can't take on the whole world. I mean, this is ridiculous that we are now are, are being asked to somehow get involved in Palestinian issues. I mean, but in, but in terms, involved in Palestinian just, just, issues just, all the time. Just let me finish it. But in terms of the yeah. theological argument, you agree, because we also heard last absolutely. night from Hassan Bhatt, a former jihadi, that that argument has not really been engaged in Britain. There's not enough leadership on it, on the theological argument between Muslims. I, I, just, I don't accept that. I mean, I think Muslim scholars in this country have been absolutely clear. That any act which targets innocent civilians is barbaric, is completely unjustified in Islam. Muslims want to play their role. I mean, the good thing is that, that we've seen over the last week has been the government's use of language has changed. Instead of trying to use very controversial terms like Islamic terrorists, uh, etc., which were alienating large swathes of the Muslim community, the Gordon Brown government has actually changed use of language and is now seeing a reciprocation from Muslims themselves who want to help. So, so let me read you this, because we've debated before in the past, and I know when I read this to you previously, you said that basically it was fine. And this was on a website um, by Young Muslims, which is an organization that Inayat Bangalore used to be a part of for 18 years, and once led it, if I'm not correct, I'm mistaken. No, I'm um, and uh, it's by Hassan al-Banna, who is the founder of the, the, the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, and he says this, Jihad, beloved brother, is to be a soldier for Allah, and when the might of Islam is under threat, you should be the first to answer the call, to join, first to join the ranks of jihad, and in brackets that fighting, as put afterwards. That was on a website for 11 okay. year olds. Let, let well, this is clearly about Muslim lands. If they're under occupation, then it is an obligation to defend your land. Any country will have this concept. The jihad is actually a very noble concept about Okay. Self-honor, about then ensuring we're, we're that you, you defend the like, honor yeah. of the country. If you're attacked, of course it's right to self-defense. Is it right to kill British soldiers in Iraq? Well, that's it. No, of course it's not. And I wish British soldiers were not in Iraq. I, I want British soldiers to be back here. They, they should not be in Iraq. Iraq okay. should be governed by the Iraqis. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you both very much.